so thank you. Thank you, Greg, for the opportunity. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, many organizations right, face challenges to have a centralized data repository for operational reporting and uh, analytics purpose. Uh, challenges to process and to store large amount of structured, uh, semi-structured and unstructured data. Uh, in addition, to store data in the native format and process the data, right? So what centralized data repository help to get uh, the business insight, including reporting on the historic data, as well as uh, help with some of the machine learning based analytics, right? Uh, the overarching need for business, as I mentioned, enhanced business activity reporting, um, obviously, the time to report uh, from um, uh, daily process or monthly process to near real time or real time reporting, uh, increase agility in the process and uh, accuracy and richness in the reporting process. AWS team closely working with one of our valued customer, Erie Insurance, uh, to help set up the centralized data repository to some of, uh, to solve some of the business challenges that I talked about. I am Hariharan Amalwa, AWS Solutions Architect for Erie. So with me today, I have uh, Sushant, who is the master engineer at Erie, as well as I have Pawan Nara, who is the data architect at Erie. I'm closely working with the um, um, Erie team setting up this centralized data store. Um, and then we recently launched the workload as well. Uh, I'll take a pause here. So Sushant, do you wanna um, do a quick intro and uh, Pawan before we get started? Sure, thank you so much, Hari. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, Good, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. This is Sushant Manakari. Uh, I work as a master engineer in the data technology space, uh, mainly focused on all the advanced analytics and uh, data lake uh, pro provisioning and data sources uh, at URI. And I have Pawan uh, here. Uh, I think he's having issues with his microphone, but I can uh, talk, uh, talk on behalf of Pawan. Uh, he's a data uh, architect and he is working with our portfolio and with me uh, from day one, helping us build uh, scalable solutions, uh, architecting the designs that are needed for all the data warehousing, data lake uh, strategies, and even leveraging the data uh, as a tool to uh, for all the analytical purposes as needed uh, at your insurance. Hari, what do you? Yeah, so uh, I hope like Pawan still have the uh, issue with this, uh, with all the other points, so we'll just move on. Uh, just quick uh, right uh, summary about Erie Insurance. So Erie Insurance is a publicly traded right Fortune 500 insurance company. Uh, its mission is to provide policyholder with uh, right perfect perfect protection as well as with the perfect service with the lowest possible cost. Um, Erie offers uh, auto, home, uh, business, and life insurance right through uh, independent insurance agents, uh, as well as the corporate head, uh, headquarters in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, staffed by employees as well as the different agents. So this is a quick summary of your insurance. Um, let's quickly talk about, uh, right, so most of the uh, insurance, right, struggles to accomplish a centralized data strategy right, in three different ways. One, as I mentioned, centralized data store, uh, which should be scalable and also to store structure and unstructured data at scale, number one. Number two, um, obviously there would be multiple uh, disparate data sources Sometimes it could be like uh, data sitting at on-premises, sometimes data sitting uh, in some of third-party SaaS providers like Guideware, or sometimes it could be the data sitting in the AWS workload itself uh, in a different format or different data store. How to integrate all of them, right? So moving to the centralized data store uh, is one of the biggest challenge. Uh, and then the third one is the, obviously the smarter system for the business uh, to get insight into that data um, for some of the key challenges that we talked about. Uh, whether it is analytic workload perspective or business activity monitoring reporting per perspective. So business need decision on the data, a huge, a large volume of data, how to solve the problem is another uh, key challenge. So here I am, um, I just brought in a key benefits, right, by setting up uh, a data lake uh, in uh, AWS platform. So we will, uh, but down the slides, we'll talk about uh, each and every item, how we uh, address, right, those challenges. Uh, just to give a high level uh, view, uh, by setting up the centralized data store um, in Data Lake, uh, we were able to help uh, ERI Insurance right, set up enhanced uh, uh, data accessibility, uh, real-time data processing, 
uh, for faster decision making for the uh, adjusters as well as the operators. Uh, scalability and performance aspects, uh, we will talk about in a while. Cost efficiency as well as uh, uh, prepared data for ML workload. Uh, these are the few uh, key uh, benefits that we achieved by implementing the solution. So, uh, with that, I will take a pause here. I'll pass it over to uh, Sushant and Pawan to uh, take it further. Sushant, Pawan, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Hari. Thank you for uh, the details. So, in this slide, we're going to talk about the need uh, for consolidating data uh, in one location, creating more of a centralized repository. Um, here we are sharing uh, the challenges we faced and also the things that led us uh, to building the consolidated data store. Right? Our, our main reason to do that is our business users required uh, data from different domains like uh, policy application system, claims application system, and billing, and so on, including our third party sources that we procure the data from uh, to be available at one location. And they have a variety of use cases. Uh, some of them can be like profiling, analytics, uh, near real time dashboarding, and so many and so others. So this data is kind of fragmented across multiple source systems. And some of it is in the forms of flat files, CSVs, XMLs, relational databases, including our legacy systems like mainframe and, and tapes. So we wanted to have our use appropriate tools or services uh, to access different data formats and also consolidate the data at one location for our business users. Uh, all our data is, uh, is on-prem and to scale uh, for a stronger uh, and uh, stronger compute uh, services and for storage, uh, we need to plan uh, weeks and months ahead of time to order to resource all and install them. Uh, so to overcome these challenges, we kind of decided to consider the data in one store, uh, one data store and provide access to it using a set of AWS services and tools. Uh, and Hari, do you want to go to the next one? Thank you. So in order to do that, uh, the ability to get the data from applications uh, producing uh, into the hands of people making decisions is most uh, was the most important factor. Uh, the data must be accurate as well along with that. Uh, sometimes it was difficult to find useful information. Uh, for example, uh, for a given claim or a policy, uh, which has customer information, right? But that is not complete customer information when it comes to a claim system or a policy system. The data might be scattered. Uh, the customer information uh, database is a totally different application system and uh, data repository. But in uh, but since the applications were not connected or the, 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 the uh, data was sitting in the legacy on-prem systems, uh, there was a need to consolidate the data and bring everything at one place. Uh, and it is only required uh, for by a policy or a claim application uh, and also the billing application uh, to consider the data at once. To get complete customer information, the users even have to get uh, it from the customers, which means a dependency on another like a legacy application system. And many handholding of data, many handshakes of the data uh, that gets transferred between multiple applications. So with any new, uh, including that if there are any changes uh, to the attributes or variables uh, that are added, uh, to the policy or claim applications. Uh, and if our users wanted to get that, then uh, we had to uh, work through our ETL process and we have to make sure all the downstream and upstream application systems accommodate those uh, new attributes or changes that are coming through, uh, make all the changes on the on-prem uh, systems that are needed. Uh, the it, it was very limited. What I'm trying to say is it's very limited and it was difficult to find information as and when needed. Uh, and we had to, without making all these changes in the upstream and downstream application systems. Uh, Ari, do you want to go to the next one? And here, uh, what what is the value add our business was looking for or what why, why they wanted this? So considering these as our, one of our requirements as from the business users, our goal was to collect and consolidate all the data from all the different sources uh, with multiple uh, data formats. Uh, Desperate, uh, disparate data. Uh, it could be uh, data received in batch. It can be in uh, real-time processing. Uh, the scheme of new uh, data received uh, should be readily available uh, in the catalog for users uh, for querying the data, uh, for providing access to their uh, data uh, to the analysts, engineers, 
engineers, uh, actuaries, uh, applications, business users, and many more. Uh, provide and it also included providing access to our uh, uh, advanced analytics tools and models uh, that are needed for uh, simulating the services. Uh, a finite set of tools to access uh, this data would also help. Uh, also, there was more a specific tool uh, to access one format of data. Uh, with same tools to access different uh, sources or multiple domains, example, data engineers on claim system uh, today may work on the policy models and they should also be able to use our uh, same services as part of the uh, billing system. Uh, no need to train themselves on any different set of tools. Uh, so the AWS services is kind of plug into dif different uh, uh, data sources and data formats and be able to procure the data and read the data from one uh, source of truth. Uh, Harik, do you want to go on the next one? Uh, so we choose uh, we chose multiple uh, AWS services to uh, service uh, to build our data lake service, and some of them, uh, yeah, as we show here, we use our data cataloging and governance services. Uh, we have our uh, S3s and all the integration and inter interoperability uh, services that we need. Uh, we run uh, we run uh, Glue crawlers uh, to update our data catalogs. We use uh, Glue. Uh, uh, partitions and uh, convert them into kind of packet files and uh, then le later leverage it to one of our uh, data persistent data storage and have uh, things like uh, register spectrum, Athena sitting on top of it and querying the data. Uh, it also provides a faster scans. Uh, it also uses AWS services, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Athena and Redshift uh, Spectrum uh, that can uh, even connect to the third party BI tools that we have at ERI uh, to build any uh, near real time or uh, real time dashboard services uh, if needed. Uh, all right, do you want to go to the next one? Thank you. Uh, so here uh, we spoke about the tools and services that we needed. Uh, now let's uh, quickly talk about uh, the how we are planning to implement this, meaning we have two different services. One is uh, batch processing and other one was the real-time processing. Uh, in the previous slides, we uh, saw an overview of the data lake strategy, uh, the purpose, the problem statements, and the high-level uh, view of the services that's being used. Uh, so in this slide, we are talking about uh, how we are building the solution. Uh, first, uh, we had two approaches, as I mentioned earlier, batch in real time, uh, that covers all the requirements to feed the data to our warehousing uh, services, our BI reporting, uh, incremental uh, delta load uh, to our lake, uh, and so on and so forth. That also includes our ETL services as needed. Uh, with real time uh, processing, uh, for it, it feeds data to all our upstream and downstream systems. Uh, for, uh, with the streaming data uh, and also uh, has continuous monitoring and alert systems plugged in. If there's any outliers or if there's any discrepancies, we get to know uh, then and there. And we also have some uh, real-time uh, dashboards for our end users, our business users, uh, for continuously monitoring their uh, progress and, uh, and the data uh, uh, implementations. Uh, Harif, you want to go to the next one? Uh, this covers uh, more of the data workflow, uh, similar, similar to what I mentioned earlier, it has both uh, batch and real time. Uh, if I have to uh, dig deep into uh, the batch workflow, uh, an example would be leveraging some of the services like EMR, uh, Elastic Map Reduce, that uh, filters the data, that kind of processes the data, feeds into one of our uh, instance of our storage. And we have a DMS uh, sitting on top of that, that kind of uh, takes the data, extracts it, puts it in a, a needed format, it can be a CSV or it can be a parquet, uh, anything sitting uh, sitting in an S3 bucket. Uh, then we have a crawler attached to it uh, that kind of scans through uh, periodically, uh, depending on the schedule we have set uh, to identify if there's any uh, changes to the uh, data catalog, data schema, uh, uh, data elements and things and updates the data catalog. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of services like SQS and uh, Lambdas that are uh, built earlier. Uh, to pull the data and process as and when needed. There's also glue tables uh, that uh, kind of catalogs the data for us uh, uh, and also stores all the metadata as and when needed. And later that also converts into Parquet uh, files if needed to, uh, uh, to 
have a better performance on the uh, data availability and also query process so because it's partitioned it's much uh, faster in data processing and we can plug in any services like Athena or Redshift Spectrum uh, for querying the data and that can eventually be plugged into our third party tools like uh, Click or SAS or any other tools that are needed uh, for uh, analytical and reporting purpose. Uh, right, you wanna go to the next one? Thank you. Uh, so here uh, we talk about uh, mainly on the uh, Outcomes and the lessons learned. So we spoke about the implementations and now we are talking about the uh, benefits of what we did or the lessons learned during the journey. Uh, we focus, since it's a e insurance as an insurance company, we uh, we are primarily focused on PNC insurance and uh, we have multiple line of businesses, products and creating a centralized repository with each uh, line of business is a key factor for us. And the uh, uh, main uh, reason we did that is having uh, a scalable, uh, a real-time available data uh, for, our, for all our operational reporting, for our business consumption, uh, and also solutioning uh, uh, these uh, data lake formation, uh, data lake strategies using our AWS services. So some of the challenges that we faced uh, were uh, traditional, like the legacy applications, which eventually had to be converted to a event-driven architecture, uh, where Pavan helped us, uh, hurry in the stream and Pavan helped us a lot in implementing that. And also extracting the data uh, from the RDS and uh, up and, uh, and also uh, we have multiple data tables. So consolidating everything, uh, appending each and every uh, table, following the right tagging process, process uh, updating the catalogs and everything uh, with, within the, these multiple line of businesses was challenging. And uh, with these services that I mentioned earlier, was really helpful for us uh, to consolidate them and uh, create those as and when needed. Uh, we are still working through our next steps, that is building out the data governance uh, using data lake formations and data zone. Uh, so we are working through that implementation. Uh, we are also working through uh, some of the analytical platforms uh, using SageMaker and other tools uh, for self-service uh, modeling purposes and uh, analytical reporting systems. Um, so as Harry mentioned earlier, uh, these are some of the benefits that we leveraged. Uh, uh, by implementing the data lake strategy at uh, e-insurance. And majority of them are uh, creating a centralized repository, uh, having uh, governed access controls to the data by using the data lake uh, governance tools, uh, real-time data processing uh, via, for making data-driven decisions, uh, uh, being more reliant uh, on the data helps us kind of evaluate uh, what the decisions are and have, have, make it more real-time. And uh, with all the services that are being provisioned from AWS, it is highly scalable and performance optimized. Uh, it's able to handle large volumes of data uh, of structured and both uh, non unstructured data. So we are able to achieve uh, the accuracy that's needed for data querying and data processing. Uh, and uh, AWS helped us a lot in terms of optimizing the spend. Uh, in some instances, we have uh, reserved instances. Uh, some of them are pay as we go, uh, depending on our use cases and uh, use basis. Uh, so it was really helpful for us to uh, optimize our spend. And uh, last but not the least, we are also leveraging advanced analytics uh, space, uh, which is getting plugged into our data lakes uh, for all the data procurement and uh, modeling uh, purposes. Uh, with this, I would like to hand it over to Ari, Ari. Uh, Thank you, Sushant. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Pawan. Uh, Pawan has been our backbone uh, having <laughs> implementing all the solution. Fortunately, had some uh, audio issue today. Uh, so this is the core team that we work together. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us.